Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is the 18th video in my Python programming series, and today we're going to be talking about something called a try and accept block of code. So just like we talked about the if, else, and elif block of code, um, and like we talked about the for loop, which is a block of code, and like functions, which are blocks of code, uh, we're going to be talking about the try and accept. So in Python, we use try and accept as our keywords. In other languages, you may have heard of try and catch statements. Um, this is the same thing, except in Python, instead of catch, we use accept. Okay, so let's talk about what a try and accept statement is. Sometimes in Python, you want to do an operation or you want to try something, but you don't know if it's really going to work or not. There's some different variables that may come in. Sometimes it may work, sometimes it may not work. Usually this depends on user input or what the user is doing in the program. So a good example of this is maybe if we're validating a form. So we'll do an example here. We'll say text is equal to uh, input like this. And then we'll say username. Okay. Now, in typical usernames, you're only allowed certain characters. Maybe you can't do um, a comma. You couldn't do a star. Certain things like that, right? Maybe we only want it to be text or we only want it to be numbers. Uh, we just want to validate this. We could use a huge if statement to do this. Um, but instead, there's something called a try and accept that we can use. So in this case, I want my username to only be numbers. So I don't want it to be a string at all. I want it to only be numbers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new variable here, and I'm going to call it number. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to try to int the text like this, okay? So if you remember, what the int does is that simply converts our string into an integer. And then I'm going to print that to the screen. So I'm going to print number to the screen. Now, what happens right here is uh, if I try to type in a word like this, you see we get an error. It says there's an invalid literal for int with base 10. Now, you don't have to understand what this error is. Pretty much all this means is that we can't convert hello into a number because there is really no number there. How, how does it know what number to make that into, right? So in this case, we would use a try and accept block. Because if the user types in something that's invalid, well, we want them to type in something else. We don't want the program to crash like it just did there. So here I'm going to put a try like this, followed by a colon. And then I'm going to indent these two blocks right here. So that means we're going to try this block of code. Okay. And then underneath here, I'm going to type accept just like that, followed by a colon. Now, there is a more advanced way to do this. We can accept a specific type of error, um, but I'm not going to talk about that in this video. This is just a very basic try and accept block. And then under here, uh, I'm going to type what I want to happen if this block of code doesn't run, meaning this block of code returns an error um, and we can't actually execute it. So in this case, I'm just going to do, uh, I'll just print to the screen, invalid username because remember we're only going to have our username contain numbers all right so now if i run the program and i try to type in something that is not a string so just i mean that is not a uh, number like this it'll just say invalid username rather than crashing the program which is what happened before and if i do try to type in something that is valid so maybe i type one two three four it just gives me that username back right so it works like that um, so that's pretty much how the try and accept works. Again, this is a very basic example, and that's what I try to do in my videos, just give you the basics, and then you can try to apply it to some projects you're doing um, and some more advanced things. So again, what happens is it tries this block of code. If that block of code doesn't run or an error happens, instead of simply crashing the program and giving us that red message, it's going to go to this accept block, and it's going to do whatever's in here. Now in this accept block, again, we could ask them to type in a new username. We could display another message. We could maybe um, close the program on them. We could do whatever we want to do in this accept block. And it's extremely useful. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much how the try and accept works. If you learned something, please like and subscribe. And I will see you again in another video.